Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Today we'll be looking at a data set of red wine attributes and trying to predict its quality, which is, uh, I assume, a subjective measure based on a series of statistics. So let's get started. We'll just call this uh, red wine quality prediction. And you can see I am importing the usual three libraries, but in addition, we're going to need some pre-processing tools. Uh, you know what, actually before I do this, let's just take a look at the data. So using the read CSV function, and we can just get the file path right here, put it in there, and let's take a look. You can see that it has 12 columns, a decent number of examples, and the final column here is our target column with uh, an integer value for quality. So what we see immediately is that this is a very clean data set and there are no text labels. Let's uh, okay, well, let's import a few more things. So we're not going to need any sort of encoder but we're going to want to scale the data. So we'll import the standard scaler and we'll also import uh, the train test split function to make our lives easier. And um, okay, so what we're going to do with this is first we're going to take uh, the quality part off, and we're going to try to cluster the um, cluster the examples into six different. Uh, categories. The reason I say six is because there's actually six unique values in quality, which I'll get to in a second. So we're going to cluster it using k-means. So uh, from sklearn.cluster, import k-means, and then we're going to try to visualize those clusters using PCA. So from sklearn.decomposition, uh, import PCA. And then finally, after that's all, all that is done, we will train a simple neural network on it to try to get a good classification accuracy for the quality. So we'll run that. And now we can begin. Okay. So let's start by pre-processing the data a little. So Let's first check for missing values. So we can do uh, the is null matrix will be true or false depending on if a certain value is null. And then we can sum across the columns to get the number of null values in each column, which turns out to be zero. So we actually have no null values in this whole data set. Next, we can just take a look at the data types. Although we only have 12, it's a good idea to look. Uh, everything is in numerical form, so no worries there. And then let's look at quality. Let's look how many unique labels do we have that we're trying to classify. So quality dot unique and one, two, three, four, five, six, like I said before. <clears throat> so we're going to try to take all of this data and try to predict uh, each example to be one of six uh, classifications for quality. This could be a regression exercise as well, um, but we're going to use classification on this problem. Alright, so let's start by um, scaling our data. So for that we're going to chop off the Y, the quality column. So Y is going to be just the quality column and X is going to be everything except the quality column. There you go, take a look at Y is a one-dimensional vector of classifications and X everything except quality. So it's perfect. Let's scale X now. So uh, we'll get a, a scalar, it's going to be the standard scalar that we imported and we're going to fit X, actually fit the scalar, um, 
2x. So this is saying uh, we'll, we'll fit the scalar to x based on the values in x and then we will transform x to be the scaled version of itself and we'll store it right back into the original x. So uh, if we run that, actually uh, um, scalar.transform returns a numpy array but we still want to keep this as a pandas data frame. So let's uh, reconstruct the data frame and keep the columns as they were before. Now we run that, check out x, it's like it was before but everything has unit variance now, each feature. So that that's going to be helpful in uh, dealing with the models. So I think this is a pretty nice um, clean data set now that we can use. So let's uh, start by clustering our data. So this is unsupervised learning. Um, K means which will specify the number of clusters to be six. And the reason is that for that is there are six unique values in the quality column. So here we're not actually using any of the quality data. We're just trying to see if we can find six clusters in the uh, unlabeled data. And then we'll just fit that to the x that we scaled. Alright, now um, if we look at clusters, uh, actually uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make predictions for each example and call it clusters. So k means dot predict. And if we just take a look at that, it, it should be a a uh, one-dimensional array of all the cluster classifications 0 through 5 because there's six of them that we specified for each example. So um, let's see now, okay. What, we've already done the clustering so let's do visualization just to see what that looks like. So for this we're going to use PCA principal component analysis and we're going to specify the number of principal components to be two so we can visualize it in a two-dimensional plot and uh, we're going to make a reduced form of X now we're keeping our original X because we're going to use it later uh, to be hold on PCA dot fit transform X so now um, we're going to fit the PCA model to X. So it's going to basically apply dimensionality reduction. We have 11 columns and it's going to find the principal components of the principal axes uh, um, across all uh, the examples and it's going to create two new columns that are sort of amalgamations of the original 11 columns. So we're going to reduce the dimension from 11 to 2. And we will just make this a data frame as well, because that will return a NumPy array. And here, the columns we're going to specify as P PC1, principal component 1, and PC2, principal component 2. OK, run that. Let's just take a look at reduced x. Right. And it looks like great. Same number of examples, but now each example only has two features instead of 11. So let's put that there, make it nice. And then, um, so we're going to want to plot this. Well, we're going to plot each uh, example on a 2D grid. So we could do this this way. Uh, we'll specify the figure size, 14 by 10, and plot.scatter On the x-axis we'll have uh, x reduced, no, reduced x, reduced x, um, pc1, and on the y-axis we'll have reduced x, pc2. And you can see it's a scatter plot of all the data points, but now in two dimensions, so that we can visualize it. 
and I don't see many clusters in here. You know, it looks like one big amalgamation with a few uh, outliers, but let's see if k-means has figured out some clusterings. So what we can do <coughs> is, uh, well, k-means actually found uh, cluster centers. And you can see, um, so these are the centers of each of the six clusters that we found, but each one is still 11 dimensional. So what we're going to want to do is reduce these as well, so that we can plot them on our, on our graph. So we'll say reduced centers will be pca.transform, this time we're not fitting because we already fit to the original data, we're going to transform these and let's take another look at them. Here, let me put it in here. And now we have uh, the same six cl uh, cluster centers, but in two dimensions. So now we could plot each one of these on our guy. So, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and do that uh, up here. So we're going to put another scatter plot of the reduced centers and we're going to pick all examples uh, on the x-axis we're only going to have the x value because we could think of this as x and y but it's really PC1, PC2 um, and on the y-axis we'll just have the same thing but the PC2 value. Let's say color is black, uh, the marker will be an X, and we'll say size of 300. And let me, let me just uh, do plot.show down here. And here we go. Okay, so this is the, the, um, the clusters that we found in the data. So we can't really see them very well. So what if we color code each cluster? So each one of these um, ver uh, examples has been assigned a cluster. So if we color co code each cluster, we should be able to see this much more easily. So instead of this, instead of just plotting the whole data set, we're going to plot only, we're going to plot it cluster by cluster. So what we can do then is uh, we'll make six new lines. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Plot dot scatter. Uh, reduced x. And so we're going to plot. Um, this is on the x-axis. We're going to plot only the columns of x. Where the cluster is equal to zero. And I just realized I don't think I actually added a cluster column onto here. So let's do that. Uh, we'll say uh, reduced x cluster is going to equal to the reduced clusters. No, no, the original clusters, right? Sorry, we didn't reduce the clusters. So if we look at that, clusters, take a look at reduced x again. Now every single example has a cluster value with, to which it's been assigned, one through five, zero through five. So now what we can do is uh, plot only the examples, right? The only only the examples from the data set where the cluster value is a specific cluster. So right here, <coughs> we're going to index. at all the values where a cluster is equal to zero. Now I'm going to change this to one, two, three, four, five down here. Um, and so now we will uh, get all examples and just the PC one value of, the, of those examples. So uh, let, me, let me just restate this, okay. So basically reduced x subcluster 
is just this guy, right? And when it equals to zero, that's going to return all the examples uh, where cluster is equal to zero. Then we slice reduced x, the whole thing, uh, to give us only the examples in which uh, cluster is equal to zero. And then we are going to select only the PC1 of those examples. Because uh, the y-axis will have PC2. So if we go ahead and copy that, and paste it here, now we can change all these to PC2, and th each one of these should be a new value, like that. And finally, we're going to give them each a specific color. So color equals, uh, so for the first one, whoops, whoops. First one, I, I picked these up before, it looks nice, slate blue, spring green, uh, indigo, teal, light coral and gold. And so now we're going to get rid of our original plot and we're just going to plot basically each cluster separately with a different color. That's what this is doing. So we run that and we can see. So the original data was all blue but now we have a different color for each cluster. And it looks like it identified the six unique clusters and although to the human eye you can't really notice it, apparently this is the best thing it came up with. So, that's, that's a very interesting way to visualize clusters of data. Now I think what we'll do is we will train a model. So, let's make a new one, a new markdown, training. And here's where we're not going to use the reduced x anymore, we're going to use our original x, which looks like this. It is still 11 columns long, and we're going to use each one of these features to try to predict the quality of a given wine. So let's split our data. Uh, x train, x test, y train, y test, train test split, x and y, with a train size of 80%. Since we have a good number of examples, 80% is sufficient. It gives us a decent test size. Uh, and we'll run that. Now we should have four separate variables, not variables, sorry, well, technically, yes, uh, four separate sets of our data, two for training, two for testing. And if we make our model, the MLP classifier, which is SK Learns Neural Network, multi-layer perceptron classifier, and we're going to specify the hidden layer sizes to be... Um, pretty big because I, I was experimenting and it looks like a small uh, simple model didn't work so well here uh, and it needs to run for a bit 500 iterations then we'll fit the model to our train set that run and we'll print in the meantime a uh, metric of how well the the model did, which will be model accuracy, and to get the accuracy, we do model.score, <coughs> evaluating the model on the test set, x test, y test, and let's see how it did, and 64% accuracy. So th this is uh, the best I could come up with. It looks like perhaps there's not such a great uh, correlation between these uh, variables, these features, and the quality. Most likely that's because the quality is a very subjective measure, whereas these are not. So I'd say 64% uh, is pretty good. And uh, I guess that's it. That's, that was a pretty nice video. We, both did, we did both unsupervised learning and supervised learning. Uh, if you like the, the content, make sure to leave a comment below 
and hit the subscribe button for, for more videos. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.